Hello everyone, it's Joni at Contact North Learning Technologies. I received a few questions about whiteboard and markup tools in Adobe Connect. Instead of trying to type it up in an email, I thought I would make a short video to better show some of the options. And the first question was about a whiteboard. Is there a way to see it again? Sometimes we work on a whiteboard and then we go to a PowerPoint. We want to bring the whiteboard back again. How do we do that? I have a rather straightforward whiteboard here. One of the keys is to name the whiteboard. When we first open a whiteboard, it has a generic name like whiteboard 17. <laughs> I might not remember that next week. So I'll title the whiteboard. I'll double click in this top left corner, give it a title. So now if I'm done with the whiteboard and I want to go to my PowerPoint, the easiest way I find is to click stop sharing in the top right corner of the share pod. We get an empty share pod. I go to the drop down in the middle, go to recently shared. This lists the last five things you've opened or worked with. So I will say there's my resume tips PowerPoint. We'll pretend that we're going to talk about it. Now I want to go back to the whiteboard so I could do the same thing. Stop sharing, go into the center recently used to get the whiteboard again. There is another path. Sometimes I find this challenging to click the menus and especially when I find that I'm recording my screen such as I am now, it doesn't seem to give me enough room. But here is how you can do it if you're able to. Go to the top right corner of the share pod. There's the pods option menu. Go to share. Go to recently shared and there again is the whiteboard. But you can see how it's a little bit hard for me on my screen to click that. So I'll try it one more time. Share, recently shared, whiteboard. If I click it slow enough, it's going to do full screen. So as I said, you can try this if you want. Otherwise, stop sharing, click the drop down, recently shared, and there's our whiteboard again. The next question, is there a way to clear the whiteboard at once? If we have a typo or if we find a few people all typed in the same corner, we can go to the selection tool, click something and then click the trash can or delete it from our keyboard. If you want to capture everything, click the selection click somewhere on the whiteboard and then with your keyboard do control A. That will highlight everything and you can hit delete or the trash can and that will clear everything at once. If you only wanted to do a few things, I can hold down the control key. I want to keep my two titles and I can delete everything else. Next question, is there a way to show who made mu which markups? Unfortunately, no. This is something that we really miss from Saba Meeting and we hope that Adobe uh, will have that in the future. If you really need to know who did what markup, my suggestion would be to only give markup capabilities or drawing capabilities as Adobe calls them to one person at a time. Normally when I use a whiteboard, I go to the options and I say enable participants to draw because that just gives every participant the option to draw. I don't have it on now so what I could do to make sure that I know Pass Lake is the one drawing I would just use the commands where I hover over the individual and give them the drawing tools and then I know that it's Pass Lake that is going to be making any markups. That's kind of the best we can do there and there's Pass Lake's little scribble. Next one, is there a way to expand the whiteboard length? For instance, a continuous scroll. No, <laughs> let me delete this little squiggle here. With the whiteboard, you can make the pod larger, but even if I make it large all the way across and cover the people panel, you see it still keeps the same size. So what we do have as an option, which is a little bit of a plus over what Saba Meeting had, is you go and go into the bottom left hand corner and go to a new page. It's not a continuous scroll. We can't page up or page down, but at least you can continue from the previous page. With Saba, we used to have to save the whiteboard, clear it, and then reuse it again. This you can at least go page to page. Uh, next one, any chance of getting a pointer tool? 
Yes, we loved the laser in Saba meeting and no Adobe Connect meeting doesn't have a laser pointer per se. There are a few options. On the top right you have the pointer. You can click that and then point as needed. You can also turn that off. If you really like a laser pointer, some people draw one. So in our markups you could go to a star or I'm going to try to draw I'm going to try to draw a laser pointer. So I'll go to the fill and the laser pointer is sort of a pinky color. So I'll do that. And there's my, I could say that's my laser pointer. And then as I needed to point to it or move it to a new bullet, I can use the selection tool. I could say, okay, there's idea number one. And now look there, <laughs> there's idea number two. It looks a little more streamlined from the participant point of view. They don't see that highlighting option. So you can do that. Some people draw a star. When you look for any of these shapes, they have their default. The top part of the drawing tools are the tools that we select. And then underneath the second part are where you have the details like fill and color and size. So you can see if you wanted to do a star, you could do the same thing and move it as you go along. The other question had to do with content and uploading. When you upload PowerPoint, sometimes some of the PowerPoint arrangement changes. So for that, we would go to our slide. I'm going to say stop sharing. I'm going to go to recently shared. I should add in, if you want to open a whiteboard, say that you used three weeks ago, it's no longer in your recently shared, go into share document. This is how we upload new content, but it's also how we see what we used before. So you can sort it by type and then you'll have all your presentations. So if you had a PowerPoint that you uploaded before, you can look for it. If you had a whiteboard, you can add that in. You see our resume whiteboard there along with <laughs> a couple of hundred other whiteboards. That's another way that you can get in. I'm going to get out of there and I'm going to go to my recently shared instructor content and it should open right at our details about PowerPoint. Here is what we suggest. If you find your PowerPoint is not displaying properly, if you uploaded it as a .pptt, try saving it as .pptx and upload it then. That sometimes helps images to stay better placed. You can also save your PowerPoint as a PDF and then upload the PDF. With the PDF, you can go page by page, you can scroll, you can zoom in and out, and you can use the same markup tools. And if you have something that is either a really large size file, we say try not to go over 25 megabytes. Maybe you have a file that has a lot of animation in it, it's too big to import, or maybe you have a file where some of the images or columns are uh, displaced. Last approach is to open the PowerPoint on your computer and then screen share it. And with that, it'll keep the columns, it'll keep all the spacing as is. And with screen shares, you can also mark up and do any additional details that you need. So I hope this was helpful. We've covered all the points. We do refresher training throughout the year. So if there is something you'd like to cover, feel free to join us in one of those refresher sessions. And if not, you can also email us at Learning Technologies. We're e-classes at contactnorth.ca. I'll type that in. And we are happy to help with any other questions or comments. Thank you for those questions.